Hello, everybody. Welcome on our uh, webinar with uh, a great uh, teacher and a friend of mine, Rani Ayal from Israel. So welcome, Rani. Good morning. Good morning, Bartosz. And uh, we are living in a very strange time now in the unexpected uh, apocalypse, Corona apocalypse. And we were talking just a couple of days ago <coughs> about Wei Qi and about our immunity. And I would like to ask you to tell us a little bit about uh, how to treat uh, viral infections and what are actually viruses from the point of view of very ancient Chinese uh, medicine we practice. Because we saw on many reports that actually acupuncture was used among other interventions, especially in China and Asia, of course. Acupuncture was used to treat corona uh, patients and to help them recover. So I do believe our students uh, are very, very interested of uh, how to diagnose it and how to do it and actually how to understand this new, strange, or maybe not so new, but strange uh, disease. So I would like to ask you to present your, your presentation and your lecture. And please allow me to interrupt you uh, when I need to ask the question, you know, I'm your stupidest student, so I will ask all the stupid questions, and maybe we can then discuss uh, maybe some points or some strategies, or at least the way of thinking and understanding this whole virus uh, problem. Okay, uh, so well, thank you, Bartosz, and good morning, everyone. And um, Yes, these are strange times uh, we are living in now. Everybody is um, very frightened, I think, because we don't really know what's going to happen, and this always causes a, a kind of insecurity. Um, but times of, times of insecurity, times of challenges are always times in which we have the opportunity to look into ourselves and maybe think a bit deeper about what's going on and how we want to take charge of our lives and maybe change directions. So um, this, is how, this is how I've been experiencing the last few weeks. And it's gotten me thinking about, uh, also about Chinese medicine because <laughs> this is the prism I think of. And uh, of course also about how we can understand uh, this corona and this challenge. And in order to understand the corona and the challenge, we need to understand more about what is actually viral infections because there's nothing new about this uh, epidemic. It's uh, actually, I've been reading that uh, all of the researchers say, well, um, according to the, the, the history that we know of, of epidemics, we've been long overdue for an epidemic. And this is just part of human evolution, and we'll be talking a bit about that uh, as we go through the lecture. Um, but every time there's something new and that's something that uh, frightens our, our, our basic security, our basic infrastructure of life, it's, it's always a challenging time. So exactly. let's talk about, um, in order to understand the corona, let's talk about what actually are viruses. And the truth is that we don't really know. Um, we know um, from Western point of view, we know that since we have been able, since we have been aware of um, there being viruses, there have always been viruses. So probably, as we can imagine, uh, viruses have always been here. They've, they're, they're millions of years old. Maybe they're as old as humanity. Maybe they're even before uh, humanity. Maybe they're even before life on Earth in general. So we don't really know. We know there's an. Uh, a, we we know to recognize just a few, because we can only recognize the ones that actually cause problems in us and can, can be researched and developed. Uh, so there are these tons of viruses that we are dealing with uh, all the time in our lifetimes, both airborne viruses and viruses that we get from the food that we eat and from the dirt that, that we, we, we ingest. Um, so there's always been viruses. 
we don't really know that much about them. We need to uh, understand we, the process. We even yes. don't know if the viruses are alive or they are not alive. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say now. In the, in the um, scientific point of view, they are not alive because there is no metabolism process. They don't, they don't know how to reproduce by themselves. They don't know how to create energy for themselves. There is, there is nothing there. Uh, but, sorry, what is there, what is there, what we do know is that viruses are actually fractures of, of DNA or RNA chains. The, 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 the fractures of the code of life. So they are not alive, but they have within them the code of life. This is very interesting. This takes us more to Chinese medicine because when we think of what is the code of life, this is not just the personal human life, but the creation of life in general. This is what we call the Yuan Qi, the original Qi, the code of how to manifest life, we could say. So the viruses do have these, are, are built actually of these kinds of fractures of code of life. And they each have, or the ones that we know of, they have this kind of protein envelope, which, is, which actually is their ability to, to connect, to dock into um, um, human cells or cells of life in general. And through this, actually, what happens is this code of life comes into the cell and interacts with the cells, with the person or the, the, the life forms uh, code of life. And this causes a process of change. So we'll talk about that in a minute. So actually, when we think of what are viruses, if we want to answer the question, viruses are fractures of life energy. They are fractures of um, Yuan Qi, not in the personal sense, but in the sense of the creation of life in general. This, for me, this, this brings up a very... Um, interesting concept in Chinese medicine, a very, very ancient concept, which actually is even before the Chinese medicine that we know today. This, this is from um, Shang Dynasty, um, before the Neijing, before any kind of uh, written development of Chinese medicine. This was the first idea of what is sickness. And this is what we call Gui. Gui are ghosts. Um, so the ghost, in, or, in order to understand what is a ghost, and maybe, maybe people know of this, of the ghost point treatments and ghosts that are uh, invading human bodies or taking over human bodies or taking over our awareness. Um, I, I, I want to take that a bit further. In order to understand that, we need to look at what is the character, Gui. And... In order to understand the character Gui, we need to look first at the bottom part, and we can see that the character Gui actually begins from the character of Ren, which is the character of, of man or of humanity in general, human, human life, human nature, human manifestation. And you can see this if you look at the bottom part of the character Gui, you can see these two legs, sorry, these two legs of the Ren, you can see at the Gui, but there's something wrong here. You can see that this leg is actually broken. Something is, not, um, something is not correct. Something has been broken here. And actually what you can see above in this upper part is you can see the emphasis within the character of the man of the part that is in affinity with heaven. You can say with our awareness, with the spirit, with the code of life. Uh, this is this big part up here, which says that there's everything, all of the awareness is in the head and in the, 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 the aspiring of going to heaven and to connecting to heaven. And the last part of the ghost is what you can see, this part here, this is kind, a kind of a hook. That is how the, this ghost, how this entity actually hooks itself into the human being, into the human awareness into the, the, the human body, taking over the functioning of the body, actually using the energy of the body in its quest to rise and to manifest itself and to go to heaven. I so, 
question. Yes. About that. Yeah, I think uh, it's more a comment than a question. I think that's fascinating how you present it because actually from this point of view, what we can see here, this, this awareness and the legs, but especially this hook, it's quite similar to what you uh, explained about viruses a minute ago, that they are this part of you and she, let's call it, or a part of DNA, but also that they have this, this proteins to connect to us, to, to grasp our cells and then to go into this process is quite similar from my point of view to what you, what you are explaining now about way about this very, very ancient idea. That's exactly right. I, I must say that you make me proud, Bartosz. If you are really my stupidest student, then probably it, it makes me proud that probably I'm doing something right. So yes, thank you. I perfectly agree with, with what you say. When we speak of the Gwe, we're actually speaking of broken souls, souls that have not been able to complete the transformation to heaven. Actually, what we could say, fractures of humanity. And yes, fractures of humanity are fractures of life in our own uh, personal prism, we could say, prism of, of Chinese medicine and wanting to understand how to help people because this is what interests us at least today. And yes, of course, the Gui have their own kind of docking system, which is this hook, um, which, which connects them to the body. This is the, the, um, the analogy of the Chinese medicine, trying to, trying to explain the, the energy behind the manifestation, not so much the, 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 the physical uh, makeup of the cells or of the molecules. Um, so, yeah, I think this is a, a, a fascinating kind of comparison between um, viruses, how we can understand viruses within um, the, the life or the experience of, of, uh, of people and how we can understand a very, very ancient uh, way of looking at this. And this is very interesting because when we speak of the way the most... Um, well-known um, essay about the Gui is, of course, by Sun Simiao. And this is from, I think it's the 7th century, 7th, uh, 8th century, something like that. Um, but Sun Simiao is actually uh, referring to information from way, way back, actually, actually quoting a very ancient, famous, maybe mythological doctor by the name of Bian Chue from about 500 BC or so. So anyway, um, Sun Simiao talks of 13 ghost points, and these have to do with all kinds of different manifestations of ghost possession. But if we look at the, at the ghost points of these 13 ghost points, at least these five that I've put up here um, are very relevant and will be relevant as we talk about how we want to help to regulate the, the immune system when we deal with viruses. So um, the first three are actually the first three points that are discussed by Sun Simiao, and they discuss the process of ghost possession, how suddenly something takes you over. And we will see that all of these points um, have to do with um, really the most severe acute symptoms um, that we're worried about today. So we'll talk about that a bit later. And Dumai 16 and large intestine 11 are very, very important points that have to do with the immune system. And we will elaborate on that. There was a question? Yes, uh, again, a kind of comment, because I remember this article I read years ago that Right now, when we read about treating corona and treating viruses, uh, very often uh, Chinese doctors uh, say about the wind uh, diseases, wind cold or wind heat diseases. But I remember this article uh, I read, and then the author said that actually, in the very beginning of Chinese medicine, of the development of Chinese medicine, the whole medicine was very shamanic. So the, the main cause of disease were demons or ghosts, some influences from outside. And then when uh, there was a need to make this medicine more um, 
scientific, not so demonic anymore. Uh, they changed many demonic uh, influences into wind, into something that changes very quickly, that attacks you from outside. These two ideas, the ghosts and the wind, are quite close to each other. And in the development of Chinese medicine, the wind diseases uh, somehow took over some of the diseases that were previously um, thought of as uh, demonic possessions. So now when you compare it, it makes a great sense for me that uh, we are talking of the wind disease from Chinese medicine perspective, but actually we can think of it also way back in time as a kind of demonic um, situation. Let's, let's call it like this. Yes, and this is why uh, up until today, it's a very important key phrase that we all, that we all know about uh, a diagnosis of external pathogenic factors, that all of the diseases are actually born on the wind. It is the wind that brings these diseases into the body. So, yes. Very, very interesting. So everything is ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's, let's go uh, a bit further and understand actually Actually, how viruses affect us, and I, I'm 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 combining a bit uh, our Western understanding with our energetic understanding. Um, don't take it uh, as uh, uh, as an absolute truth. Uh, it is my understanding. Please use it if you like, and if you don't connect, that's fine. Um, but the way I understand virus uh, viruses is that they actually corrupt us at the level of the Jing Shen. As I said, there is this fracture of the DNA or the RNA that actually enters into the cells and creates a process of change within the, the DNA, the Yuan Qi, the personal code of the person from the inside. And this change actually allows um, the cell to start replicating the virus. And this whole process is that the cells replicate the virus and the two things happen. One thing is that as more and more cells replicate the virus of the body, that means that more and more cells, more and more of ourselves is not functioning properly in our, in our um, process of creation of qi and blood. So we will see that in this beginning process, the first thing that happens is first that is this, this, this tiredness, this weakness of the person because the body is not functioning anymore for the person. It's functioning for the creation of more and more viruses. And then what happens uh, as the viruses replicate is that the, they actually rupture or kill the cells and these viruses continue to continue to uh, multiply and to infiltrate more and more and more cells. And this is how we could say the virus, the code of the virus, or the ghost, if you like, takes over how the body is functioning and the body is not functioning for us anymore, but functioning more as a manufacturer for more and more viruses or codes. Uh, so this is what we call the incubation period. This is the first part of the disease. And the important thing, as I said about this, is that we see, first of all, weakness of the ying qi. And weakness of the ying qi, that means that the body is not nourishing itself. That means that the first things that we start to feel in the first few days after infection are weakness. And in the beginning, it might be just a bit of tiredness, and as this continues, the weakness gets worse and worse, and we're really not able to do anything anymore. And actually, the, maybe the first thing that happens, and um, as you become more aware, you can look at this as yourself, at yourself, because we all go through these kinds of viral infections, and you will see that actually the first thing that happens in really the, the, the first one or two days after infection is that first of all, your Shen is infected. And this means that you become depressed or maybe it's not depressed, but you wake up in the morning and you don't have the same kind of feeling that you usually have your energy in the morning is, is, is below average. And many, many times 
this causes just a feeling of, oh, I don't feel like waking up today. Just a few more minutes in bed. All these kinds of very, very uh, small, um, you could say, um, clues that something is wrong. So this is what happens in the first two, three, four days um, of, the, of the sickness. And this actually means that this is a level in which there has not yet been a reaction of our immune system. And the reason that there's not yet been a reaction of our immune system is that um, our immune system knows how to recognize um, outside influences. But when this influences, this virus has actually changed us from the inside, this takes much more time to start to recognize. And this is why when we speak of the immune system, well, it's very common to say the immune system means Wei Qi. And this is only part of the picture because Wei Qi is what we call the protective Qi. It's traditionally described as the energy, the, the, the energy of the, the troops that are guarding the camps from the outside. So it has very much to do with uh, protecting us from the outside and fighting off, fighting off things that we already know are not, not good for us, not part of us. Our enemies. Our enemies, exactly. Um, but the problem with the viruses is that we have not yet recognized the enemy. And the process of recognizing the enemy, this is not to do with the Wei Qi. This has to do with what we call the Zheng Qi. And the Zheng Qi is the upright Qi. It is the Qi that is actually created in, in the lower Dantian, created uh, under the, the, the authority of the kidney yang. And it has very much to do with this recognition of what is me and what is not me and being able to, to learn um, new things about what is not me. So this, has, this is the, the Zheng Qi, the upright Qi, the part of the immune system which is learning to recognize new problems and creating certain kinds of white blood cells that are able to recognize and to treat and to deal with this specific kind of problem. So when we speak of the, of the immune system, uh, I really want to stress that we need, to, we need to, to diagnose and to deal with the level of the Wei Qi within the infection, within the disease, but also with the level of the Zheng Qi. And maybe understanding the Zheng Qi is more important because this is to help a person to more readily um, recognize the enemies and to, to direct the, the, the Wei Qi towards these specific enemies. Yes, Marco. I just wanted to sum it up and to understand it well. Uh, you are saying that this delay in uh, immune response to the virus and this uh, quite long time of, of lethargy uh, is like incubation is caused because the virus enters the cell and hides there and our body doesn't know yet that the virus is something dangerous, something threatening us. That's why the body doesn't react properly. The way she is not evoked yet. And the virus uses this time of incubation to rapidly reproduce and to like build his troops inside our body, hidden from our way she. And then correct Gen Chi would help us in this recognition that this is actually something wrong going on inside our own bodies, right? That's exactly right. And I'll say even more, the process, this is, this, this is interesting, you know, this is, this is Western science, not, not uh, Chinese, but actually the, 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 the process of the reaction of the immune system um, uh, targets not so much the viruses, or it takes time to target the virus, but even before that, it starts to target the cells that have been corrupted. And this is actually what causes a lot of the problems of the more, uh, the more developed inflammatory processes that can lead to, uh, to, to, to death. Um, so 
Yes, I, 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 think, I think you summed it up perfectly. And what I would want to do now, I want to talk about the kind of how can we diagnose this? Because first of this diagnosis is, of course, uh, self-diagnosis. As I said, the person starts to feel weak. This has to do more for education, for ourselves and for our patients. When you start to feel weak, when you start, when you wake up in the morning, and you are more depressed than usual. Maybe you, you wake up in the morning and you're depressed because you're depressed. But if you wake up and you're more depressed than usual, um, then many, many, many times this has to do with um, dealing with this first level of viral infection. So um, this beginning process, this incubation period, uh, has a very unique uh, pulse quality to it. Because as I said, First of all, what is happening? Well, the pulse only describes the process. There's nothing, there's nothing magical or mysterious about pulse diagnosis. It's just learning to be able to, to, to read what, what the, the, the pulse is describing because it's describing the person. So we have this weakness of the yin qi. So the pulse in general is a weak pulse. It feels abnormally weak. Really, really like empty. There's no vitality to it. Um, when you become uh, more proficient in your pulse diagnosis, you will be able to feel on the top level of this weak pulse, at the, really at the, at the upper border of the weak pulse, you will be able to feel that there's a kind of very thin, very, very small vibration. And this vibration actually is telling us that the upper level, the level of the Shen is disturbed within the, within, within the pulse, within the person. So this has to do with these um, symptoms of tiredness and real weakness and real lack of vitality, both physical and mental. Um, as the, the second part of what, what usually happens by definitely by the time the patient comes to you, like uh, after the first few days starting to feel sick already, um, then the first thing that you will start to feel is you will start to feel the lower jiao much stronger than it should be. And uh, uh, many times, many times students uh, or, or practitioners that, that come to me and they talk about the lower jowl and they said, oh, this person had a really strong lower jowl, so good vitality and strong, strong energy in life. No, it, it doesn't work like that. Chinese medicine, it's not about having the most uh, energy. It's about having the best balanced energy. And actually, the energy of the lower jowl should be deep and should be steady and should not have this kind of pounding, yang, fire, uh, expanding feeling to it. So when you feel this, this actually says that the activation of the immune system, the jeng qi, this process that is under the authority of the kidney yang, is, is, being, is being more active at this stage. So we're actually feeling that the immune system is in the process of creating these new cells, these new uh, white blood cells that will be able to recognize and to deal with the virus. I just um, want to ask, yes. If this quality, because I haven't got so much uh, experience in treating uh, fresh infection coronavirus patients, so I just wanted to ask you if this, this second, this response part of the pulse, this pounding, fiery lower jaw, could be anyhow compared to what we feel sometimes in acute autoimmune diseases when also the, the uh, immune system is overacting, is too strong, is too, I don't know, pounding uh, under the, the fingers when we, when we touch the pulse. Okay, so first of all, uh, we're, not, we're not yet talking about corona. First of all, uh, none of us yet have much experience about treating corona patients. Uh, but I do imagine that over the next few weeks, um, as we get out of this quarantine, at least in Israel, it probably will happen in about three weeks, um, we will be seeing more and more patients. And uh, this kind of corona infection is is 
with us uh, for good, like all kinds of uh, viral infections. I'm sure there will be many corona uh, patients for you to treat uh, next winter, for example. But uh, first, we need to get there. So we're not talking yet specifically about corona. We're talking about viral infections in general and the reaction of the immune system in general. And yes, of course, this same kind of feeling is the feeling we get every time the immune system is overactive. So your example of autoimmune diseases is a good example, but also this, this aspect of the pulse of the pounding in the lower jaw, you will also find in other kinds of external pathogenic uh, factors like wind, cold, uh, viruses or uh, bacteria or any kind of activation of the immune system. So if we get back to uh, the, the, the most common symptoms that we see um, as reaction of the immune system, we start to get fever, which is the yang qi, the fire of the body building up actually in order to, 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 to fight, to defeat, to, to defeat the virus. And we get all kinds of pains in the body, which also has to do with this yang energy and wei qi energy, which is overactive in all of the external parts of our, of our body. So, so this causes buildup of fire and buildup of fluids and buildup of pressure and, and pains. And of course, we get all the inflammatory processes, which usually start in the mucosal um, mucosal cells, which this is, these are the linings. And as it gets worse and worse, of course, it goes more and more into the organs themselves. So again, this is general idea about viruses and definitely airborne viruses. We feel this more in the upper respiratory system and viruses that have to do more with the digestive system. Symptoms are, are different, but in general, this this is not about the virus. This is how the immune system reacts. This is the reaction of Wei Qi outside and inside, you could say. Um, and yes, as we said before, uh, a big problem, especially with these uh, epidemic kind of viruses, um, is that if the immune system, if the Zheng Qi is not balanced correctly, then we get one of two different um, directions of disease. One is that the inflammatory process is unregulated and this over-inflammatory process. And as we said, the immune system targets not only the viruses, but also all of the cells that are affected. So in essence, the immune system is actually killing us from the inside, killing off more and more of us from the inside, and this can cause organ failure and death. And the other option is that the Zheng Qi is um, not powerful enough, not strong enough. The immune system is corrupted and all kinds of opportunic, opportunistic infections come in, especially if you are in this uh, more difficult stage and you are in the hospital. So there are much more opportunistic infections for you to, 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 to contact. Sorry? There are more opportunistic infections for you to die from. Yes. yes. Um, okay, so I said this already, but I want to stress it again. Um, when we speak of the immune system, the part of the Wei Qi is the part that people are more aware of, and this has to do um, with, le with levels, with stages of the treatment that have to do with regulating the reaction of the body. Um, but we need to take into account the Zheng Qi, first of all, because this is regulating how the body can recognize and create the, the, the proper antigens for the uh, antibodies um, for the virus. And this has to do with kidney yang, as we said, but also has to do very much with the level of what we call the level of the extraordinary channels because the extraordinary channels are this very, are, are, are this primordial system of regulation, of learning how, of, of Yuan Qi, you could say, of how things should work and how to uh, rectify 
the energy that is corrupted to make it better again, to make it true again. And when we speak of the extraordinary channels in this context of uh, the immune system, we're most of all speaking about the Dumai and the Yang Wei Mai. These are the channels that have to do with the Yang action of the body, with the, re with the reaction of the body, and also with the ability of the body to recognize what is true and what is not true and needs to be, to be addressed in order to be defeated, in order to bring regulation back to the body. This is very much the basic idea behind the extraordinary channels, um, especially Dumai. Uh, Yang, Wei Mai, Yang Wei Mai is very important to think of in uh, treatment of viral diseases because Yang Wei Mai has to do with how we integrate, how we interact with the outside world, with the young. And it has to do with all of the processes of being able to recognize something new, to learn something new, to develop through this interaction with outside influences. And actually, Yang Wei Mai always comes together with Yin Wei Mai. Yin Wei Mai has to do with actually uh, making this, this learning the process and, and the process of evolution from the inside, of developing from the inside. So um, this, is something, this is something that I wanted to say about, you said it before in the introduction, um, um, the yang, yang and Yin Wei Mai have to do with the evolution of self. And we can speak of this on a very spiritual level, but we also need to understand this on a very day-to-day -day level of how when we come into contact with something that we don't know, how do we go through the process of learning, is this okay for me or not okay for me? And if it's not okay for me, how do we, how do we activate the immune system in order to defeat it and to get rid of it? So, um, let's talk about Corona. Again, not from personal experience yet, but we can have this same discussion maybe next year. I'm sure we will all have much more experience specifically with Corona. But actually, we all do have uh, lots of experience with coronavirus because it's estimated that about 30% of all the normal, regular winter uh, colds, wind cold that we go through in the winter, comes from viruses from the corona family. So as we said before viruses, every virus is a new challenge. Um, but um, basically, basically uh, we're going to talk about how to treat, um, how do you call it, viral infections of the upper respiratory system. And let's talk specifically about what we do know about the symptoms of corona what makes it more special is that, first of all, we know that it's highly infective and we know that the, um, the main symptoms are first are high fever and headache and the main problem with the corona is the effect on the upper respiratory system, the coughing and the difficulty of breathing, which is what brings most of the people to the hospital. Um, so, but this is, but again, it's not different from any other virus. And as we all know, and we all hope that these statistics are right, 85% of the people will be infected with Corona and have a regular, have a regular, uh, wind cold experience, uh, winter, uh, so nothing special. Um, one interesting symptom that comes up with corona, with uh, people infected with corona, um, and I know this also from other viral infections, but it's interesting. Uh, there is uh, uh, a lack of sense of smell or taste. Lots of, lots of people are saying that, uh, that this was the beginning of the infection, even before they knew that they were sick. So this takes us back to this first level of corruption of the Jing Shen that we talked about in the process of the viral infection. Um, for treatment. First thing I want to really, really emphasize. 
Um, as as I, I, I tried to emphasize before, the main problem with viral infections, it's not an excess condition, but it's an unregulated condition of the immune system. And it's unregulated mostly because we're having difficulty in this process of recognizing something new and creating actually the, the proper reaction for this for this new entity that we need to deal with. So please don't do dispersing technique, okay? Except for specific situations that I will talk about in a minute. In general, what we want to do is we want to help the body, help, help the jengchi, help to regulate the jengchi in order to bring about a, a quicker recognition of the disease. So first, first and foremost, don't disperse patients with these kinds of um, viral infections. Um, it, should be, it should be obvious to you because the patient is coming in and they are very, very weak. They are very, very deficient. Um, they're having a really big problem with their energy. Yes, they do have a high fever. Yes, maybe they also have a headache, but don't disperse the heat because if you disperse the heat, you're dispersing the yang qi, you're actually um, making the process of regulation of the jeng qi longer and less efficient. So don't disperse. Uh, second thing is treat often. I, I would say, I, I don't know how, how to say what is often, uh, but definitely more often than what you usually treat patients. If you usually see a patient once a week, see these patients definitely two or three times a week. Uh, if you see patients every two or three weeks, like more common in, 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 in my clinic, uh, these patients I will definitely see every five days. Um, for, the, for the first two or three treatments. And the reason is that, as I said, we're not dispersing and we're actually try wanting to support the process of the Zheng Qi. And because of the weakness, it is important to support more often, at least until you see a change in the pulse picture. When the pulse picture becomes more Normal what you expect when a person is combating a disease, which means more superficial, more wiry, more hard on, on the outside, on the superficial, on the young level, this is good. This is perfect. Even if the patient is feeling with a high fever and even worse, this is the right direction. And this means already that you can change the treatment strategy, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, and... Last thing, this has to do also with the understanding that we want to really help the Zheng Qi to learn how to act properly, to, to, to regulate the energy of the person. In order to regulate the energy of the person, you need few points, few points, not too many points. Every point that we use is an instruction, is, is a code for the body to go through a process of change. Um, when you use more than three, four, five points, there, there, there is no process. There is only a symptomatic effect of the needles. So we're not looking for short-term symptomatic effect. We're looking for helping to make the process as effective as possible. So few points, two or three points, usually should be, should be enough. The main strategy, as I said, is first of all, we need to regulate. Yes, Bartosz. I just wanted to ask one question. You said it, but I want to make sure that I understood it well. Uh, when the patient with this kind of infection comes to my clinic, uh, can I make this mistake of not, um, not diagnosing him properly? You say don't disperse. I understand the logic behind it. You say treat often, but do I understand right that the pulse of this patient 
except of this lower jaw over active wage reproduction. Uh, the pulse will be generally weak. And uh, I won't feel the, some powerful, lively pulse in this kind of patients. So I will not disperse him, right? Or no, at the level, at, I, 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 will, I will speak about this in a minute because there, there, are, there are two different stages in the treatment. Uh, the first stage is the, the stage that we call the incubation period and the beginning of the disease period. And this is what uh, I talked about when I talked about this unique pulse, pulse picture uh, that we talked about before. Um, as as symptoms get worse, uh, the pulse will become, symptoms get worse means that there's not only high fever and uh, coughing and difficulty breathing, but already there's, there's phlegm and inflammation. Um, and as this gets worse, or the pain is getting worse in, in the chest itself, and there's more and more difficulty with the breathing, that means there's this constriction. As this gets worse, we will feel more and more the reaction of the Wei Qi also coming to the surface. So okay. this is the stage um, that um, you will want even more to disperse because you're feeling this excess of energy. Still, other than specific cases that I will talk about in a minute, I think it's wrong to disperse in the beginning part of the disease. And I think that if you um, maybe go a bit against what you were taught uh, for the first two or three treatments that you do, you will see uh, a rapid, uh, rapid progression of the, of the healing. Okay? So main strategy is to regulate the Zheng Qi. Uh, if you look at these points, all of these points actually have to do with the extraordinary channels with the Yang Wei Mai and with the Du Mai. And first point is San Jiao 5. San Jiao 5, the, the three heater 5, is, well, it's the activation point of the, of the Yang Wei Mai, as you know, uh, but it's also the, um, the, 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 the Wei Guan, the external um, guard, guard of the exterior or regulator of the energy of the exterior. Um, so very much has to do with taking care not only of the immune system, it's not so much about bringing Wei Qi to the surface, as it is about regulating actually between the Jing and the Shen and, uh, and regulating the, um, the uprightness of the Zheng Qi. And um, gallbladder 20 and gallbladder 21 are both points of the Yang Wei Mai. And gallbladder 20 is, of course, the, 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 the pool of wind. So it's a very good point for, uh, for regulating and for relaxing uh, the reaction, the overreaction of the Wei Qi. And gallbladder 21 is also a point of Yang Wei Mai. And that's also a wonderful point when you have all of these problems that are problems of upper respiratory coughing and difficulty breathing because it directs qi downwards through the chest, which is good. Uh, Dumai 16 and Dumai 15 are not only points of the Dumai, but they're also points that the Dumai and the Yang Wei Mai actually interact with one another. So this is why they are maybe the most, most, most important points to choose at this first stage of disease. So uh, in, I, would, I would probably choose uh, um, definitely at least one, but probably two of these points in the treatment, either do my 16 or do my 15, um, together with three heater five, um, and maybe one of the gallbladder points. Not all of these together. Again, only two or three, and you want to be as specific as possible in what is your intention. So do my 15, for example, is a specific point that has to do with the voice. So when there's more throat ache or when there's more this dry kind of coughing um, that we get or difficulty in breathing because you feel, the person feels that they're constricted in the throat, 
then definitely do my 15 is the point to choose. Do my 16 is more the classical point for, for the wind. Uh, it's called the, the, the palace of the wind, Fang Fu. Um, and it is maybe the first, do my 16 and, and, and three heat or five are the first points that you should think of in any kind of um, viral infection like this when we want to actually regulate and affect the Zheng Qi. Um, there are, uh, when, the, when we're talking more about breathing difficulties, um, which is specific for the coronavirus, uh, this means that actually because the coronavirus very much infects the upper respiratory system, the immune system attacks and we actually have um, death of, of cells. So we're getting all of this reaction of inflammation and blockage and inability to breathe. So we really want to clear the heat from the chest. And when we want to clear the heat from the chest, this is the, this is the, the, the stage of the treatment where it's okay to disperse. And we really want to, these are really the more uh, serious patients. Um, definitely if you're treating in hospital, but if you're treating these, these more serious patients and you want to uh, avoid them having to go to the hospital, you really need to clear the heat from the chest. So now we have lots of pounding in the upper jaw pulse also because there is inflammation and heat in the chest. And do my 14 is the C of chi point. Um, it's the, the, the C of chi that's from, from Ling Shu, I don't remember the chapter. Um, but when there is excess in the C of chi, there is fullness of the chest, high fever, headache, and inability to breathe disperse do my 14. Um, they said it a long time ago. I will not repeat it again. This is the point for the acute breathing problems and needing to open the chest and clear heat from the chest, especially if you combine it together with bladder 13. This really helps to get rid of the inflammation and the excess within the lungs, and it will open up the breathing and relax the spasm. Um, large intestine 15, is uh, large intestine 11 is for this stage where there's already lots of inflammation and we have this heat in the yang ming because of the excess reaction of the immune system and we want to get rid of heat from the blood and from the level of the yin qi large intestine 11 is the point and lung says lung six is um a, a special point for these kinds of situations for acute insufficiency of the lungs because of buildup of excess. It's the, the Xi cleft point, uh, what we call the accumulation point. And it's a very, very powerful point in these acute situations to direct, to direct the stagnated Qi within the lungs into the, um, into, into the lung organ itself or the ability of the lung organ to um, rectify its own energy. Yes, Martha. I just wanted to ask you because when you speak of bladder 13 and do my 14, uh, immediately I think of points like lung 1 or lung 2. Lung 2 is also described as a point for getting rid of heat in the chest. Can we think of adding, for example, lung 1 or lung 2 to bladder 13 to make this combination move shoe point? Yes, yes. I think uh, Mushu combination is, is traditionally known as a combination for getting rid of the excesses. So definitely, I'm, ju I'm just giving a few ideas. Of course, these are not the only points that you can choose. Um, and last thing I want to say, sometimes there are other considerations that we want to take into account. Um, three heater six is a point I wanted to mention and... Um, Many times it is the first point, even, even though what I said about, the, about regulating the Zheng Qi in the, in the beginning, uh, three heater six is a magical point for these kinds of um, viral infections like influenza, like corona, like all of these kinds of acute 
um, viral infections of the respiratory system if, if you treat it at the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. <laughs> so this is for yourself and for your family and uh, for your students so more and more people will know. When you wake up in the morning at the beginning of the disease and you feel that maybe uh, I, I prefer to stay in bed or maybe I am depressed or as I said, the beginning of the viral infection when you, know, you don't know that you're sick yet, but you know that you're not as you are usually in the morning, do Sanjiao 6 and then you can continue on your way and you will not get sick. Uh, it's that good. Wow. But it's less, less, relevant, less relevant for these situations that we talk about now. Uh, Ding Chuan is this extra point that is on both sides of Dumai 14. It's specifically Ding Chuan means, um, um, I forgot. Uh, help me, Vartosh. Wheezing <laughs> and wheezing and something. Well, anyway, it's for coughing and wheezing. So it's really for this uh, stage of difficult breathing that we feel the constriction in the throat and the beginning of feeling of burning in the upper respiratory system. And of course, you can do it together with Do My 14, and that's wonderful. Uh, three heater 11 is a point you should know, and most people don't know it. It's, this, it's, it's, it's called the pure cold abyss. And it is the point for um, regulating excessive activity of the kidney young. So when we have um, too much heat building up and when we have this excessive reaction of the immune system and there's really a lot of um, inflammation and this inflammation is starting to create problems, um, this, is, this is definitely a point I would add to one of the two points from the main strategy in order to direct the, the cooling energy of water back into the kidneys and to balance yang and yin within the kidneys. And the last two points, actually we mentioned them at the beginning. You can see on this, on this uh, last slide of the presentation, you can see we have, we have lung 11, spleen 1, do my 16, large intestine 11. These were the points of the ghost points that we spoke of in the beginning. Uh, both large intestine, lung 11 is a very important point when we have hoarseness, loss, loss of ability to speak, uh, pain in the throat, coughing, which is more the upper respiratory part of the coughing. So this can definitely be a point to add to the beginning stages of, of the disease and when there starts to be cough and fever and pains, lung 11 is very good for that. Spleen 1 is a point that hopefully you will not need to use too much, but you should know about. Spleen 1 is a point when we have um, fever uh, so high that it causes delirium and can cause convulsions and for more serious uh, situations of high fever, may be in danger of going into organ failure. Spleen 1 is the point to release the heat from the blood and from the interior. So that's something to know about also. And I think that's it. Well, uh, wonderful. Thank you very much. It's a very clear, uh, clearly shown uh, strategy. I just, uh, I have this question. Um, about all these points and all this um, approach. From the very beginning, you focused on the Gen Qi and on the lower jaw and on the activity of our immune system. But when I read through the articles written in China or when I talk to other practitioners or hear their stories, also when treating this kind of viruses, quite often they focus more on either the lungs themselves uh, and they they use points like lung five or 
or even rank seven sometimes, or more on the young Ming part, and they use lots of stomach and large intestine points. I can see some of large intestine points in your way of thinking also, and I do understand them, but uh, I, I can't see stomach 36 here. Uh, and, uh, and for good reason. That is my question. Uh, I, I feel you, you look at this whole story from a different perspective. Okay, let's, uh, let's divide that into two different things. Um, let's begin from why you don't see stomach 36 here. I don't think stomach 36 would be part of the formulas that you will see coming out of China uh, from, uh, from their experience, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, the reason you will not see stomach 36 here, and I think that stomach 36 is a mistake, is that because the body is at war, and when the body is at war, we want to help the body to direct its energy in order to be most efficient in rectifying the immune system and fighting off the disease and coming back to a stage of balance. Um, in order to do this, you do not want the body to waste its energy or to direct its energy into the digestive system in the sense of nourishing as you would think with stomach 36, okay? So definitely when you have, and you all know this from your own intuition and your own experience, when you are sick with a virus, you don't have don't a good appetite, to. you don't want to eat. If you eat, you feel more tired. Don't eat, there's no reason to eat. Drink, hydrate yourself, eat a bit uh, uh, as if you have an appetite. Uh, but don't eat and don't try to fortify the ying qi because we're not at the level of the ying qi. The body needs to concentrate its energy at the level of the jeng qi and the wei qi. So we don't want to send more energy into the ying qi. Um, the other part is the part that has to do with yang ming heat, which is what you're talking about when you talk about points like large intestine 11, large intestine 4, uh, stomach 37 if you disperse it, stomach 44, stomach 40, these kinds of treatments that have to do more for clearing the digestive system and clearing heat from the digestive system. Um, this is possible uh, as part of the treatment strategy um, if you see symptoms of heat in the Yang Ming, if you see digestive symptoms coming together with, um, with these kinds of problems. It's not, it's, not, it's not part of the pathophysiology of corona. There's almost no cases of digestive, system, the digestive problems, but may, may, maybe some. Um, uh, what, what, I want, what I want to show is that you are, if you are very um, specific in your diagnosis, if you are very... Um, clear in your diagnosis and specific in your treatment strategy and you're helping the body to cope with the, with the disease in the way that it knows how to cope with the disease. So I think you will be much more successful. I have lots of experience, not with Corona, but with all kinds of uh, viral infections and influenza is a pandemic that goes through the country every winter and uh, many people uh, have very serious uh, infections every winter. This approach uh, works, I think, most effectively and most quickly. Thank you. Uh, thank you also for explaining these uh, differences in the approach. And I do believe uh, your knowledge and your experience will help many practitioners all over the world to understand better the working of our uh, immune system and the setting of our immune system. And as you know, I'm trying to be as specific as I can. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> uh, so, uh, so thanks a lot once again, and I wish uh, what you said about uh, Israel and going out and coming back to whatever is normality, more or less to normal situation would happen. And uh, 
I wish you could go for a walk with your long walk with your dog at the beach. And of course, I would like to, to wish you also lots of health. And uh, I think at the very end of this uh, seminar, we can say to the world, to all our audience, that we are not only resting and only talking about viruses, that we are also extensively working on uh, the points and going through the points. So I know what you will do when we finish the seminar. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to thank you very much for that, that you, uh, that you decided to spend this time focused also on the uh, Gates of Life project. And uh, I do believe this, this change in, uh, in the history of humankind that are happening right now will help us focusing on the book. And maybe, I, I don't want to tell it loudly, but maybe pushing it a little bit towards the end, let's say it like this. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. So, um, thank you all. And um, I, 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 I want, I want to, to, to finish with maybe we should all remember that these times of difficulty are times of challenge and times of challenge are actually an opportunity um, for development. And this can be um, development of awareness and this can be uh, development of your health and your family life and this can be your professional development for being able to help people better and, and um, this also has to do with the Yang Wei Mai and the Yin Wei Mai and this constant process of evolution that we're going through so please I hope that uh, these comments I had uh, will help you in your clinic and help your patients. And I wish you all health. Goodbye. Thank you very much, Rani.